Hi guys and welcome back to our channel. For those of you who've not watched before, I'm Sophie Patterson, interior designer based in London. And today we have a real treat for you. I'm so excited to share this. It's our first ski chalet that we've ever designed. And we're gonna be sharing with you the 3D rendered images of the open plan living room, kitchen room, kitchen room? dining room and kitchen and also the primary bedroom. It is such a special project. It's very different from anything we've designed before. So Vanessa and I have been working on this for six months and we're gonna talk you through all of the designs, all the fabrics and finishes that we've used and give you a little bit of insight into why we've selected certain items. We've got our client coming in an hour. So we just squeeze this in before they come to see her. I'm really excited to see their reaction and I hope you guys like it too. Let's get started. We are in our design studio right now and we're in our meeting room, as you can probably tell. And in about an hour, we have our clients arriving who we have been designing an amazing chalet for in San Moritz. It's a very special project. We haven't shared any sneak peeks of this project as we've been designing it. I don't think we have, have we, Vanessa? I think you posted something to Instagram. But Did I? Maybe not of the fabrics yet. Okay, sometimes I can't resist because I get too excited, but this project is amazing. I've been working on it with Vanessa for the last six months. We've been working very, very hard. We've got all the CGI's of the living room. It's an open plan living room, dining room and kitchens. So we've got a couple of angles of that that we're gonna share with you. Also a CGI of the primary bedroom and we've got all the fabrics and finishes that we're gonna briefly talk you through. So let's get started. So we're gonna start off with a 3D rendered image with the open plan living area, which really has the ultimate wow factor. We took a lot of inspiration from the surrounding landscape and we really wanted to maximize those amazing views. The client had a brief that they wanted us to use lots of earthy natural textures. They wanted a very rustic feel, but with a contemporary twist. So there's lots of ways that we've delivered that. I hope the client loves it as much as we do, but I'm gonna hand over to Vanessa now to talk a bit more about the design in detail. So Vanessa, what was the starting point for this design? I mean, the, definitely the starting point were the views outside. Um, you have an incredible view of the mountains. And so we wanted to take inspiration from that, from you know all the kind of rough edges of rocks and the texture of snow and everything you see kind of on the outside reflected on the inside. So uh, the main kind of focal point of the space is the massive uh, chimney brass that comes in the middle of the room uh, with a gorgeous fire underneath and that kind of divides the dining room and the living room. And so we've made the chimney breast this really textured um, kind of white concrete finish and then done a trim with bronze to really kind of highlight that bottom base and also make it, you know, fire safety. Yeah. It's important. Health and safety, <laughs> Health always and safety, first. <laughs> but make it beautiful. Um, and so, yeah, we can kind of go through the tray here a little bit. We wanted to bring in as much texture as possible. That was really important. So more neutral scheme, but visually still so interesting. And it all kind of started off with the weathered brick uh, herringbone floor, which is super durable, especially if they're coming in in their ski boots and you don't have to worry about marking ever anything because it's mm -hmm. already, you know, weathered and old. And the more weathered it gets, the better it looks. Exactly. But we wanted to keep it really warm and soft, so we brought in these gorgeous kind of braided natural rugs um, and kind of, yeah, played with the different textures of hammered metals and um, fun, you know, golden poofy trims. Poofy trim, that's poofy a new trims. one. <laughs> that is the technical term. <laughs> um, and then also just for another color, like very little hits of navy blue. So in the piping and in some of the cushions, just to, you know, bring out those blues that you see mm. when the sun's setting on the trees outside. Um, so yeah, we wanted the space to feel super cozy uh, for the whole family to enjoy, but also still be extremely kind of elegant. So mm -hmm. I think we've achieved that in this room. Yeah, and there's a lot of pattern in this tray as well. Like if you pan in closely, you can see there's just pattern on pattern on pattern. But what you find in a space like this, where it's so open plan, all these patterns kind of disperse and they almost become a neutral. So that's one thing that we weren't scared where we knew we had to keep a neutral color scheme that we were really gonna embrace lots of texture and lots of pattern to make sure it wasn't boring. 
Yeah, and we kept the fabrics, like the main fabric on the sofa is a uh, beautiful linen, so it just has that relaxed feeling that you could just fall into the sofa yeah. and spend hours there reading after a long day on the hill. Yeah, the client really wanted us to use lots of natural materials everywhere, so we definitely carried that through throughout the whole scheme. The look, mood and feel, now this is something we do on every project and it's almost like a barcode is how I describe it. It has like a little slice of different inspiration we want to use, maybe different materials, it's got the chandelier that we want to use. And by looking at this, the client gets an instant snapshot of the kind of feel and the look that they're going to get in the room. And then we use that very early on in the design process to make sure that we're on the right page and then we take that and extrapolate it and obviously develop it, get a lot more design detail in there. And then we'll move on to maybe the next page, which I think is the elevations. Oh no, we've got the FF and E selection. Um, so all of this is approved before we get to the 3D rendered image because to do 3D rendered images takes a long time, doesn't it? A long time. <laughs> we have to go into extreme detail. We give them every single spec, yeah. including where all the lighting is going to go because how it bounces in the room is really important. So they get kind of a full package and then they develop it into a big, beautiful room. Yeah, and it was interesting. <laughs> when we were doing this, we were um, doing all the 3D rendered images with an external contractor whilst we were installing our second project in the Gulf. And we were having a team discussion about AI because a lot of fake um, interior images were popping up on our Instagram from other design studios. And it was just interesting seeing how much effort and work and detail goes into a 3D rendered image, which is truly reflective of what the client's gonna get as opposed to an AI image. And actually Mark from our team did a chalet and I think he did it in about two hours, five hours, he's telling me five hours one evening um, versus the like five to six months this took us. Yeah. So that was quite painful, but what I would say is obviously you've got to be so careful with AI images because you're not truly designing. It's very different from the process that we've gone through. And there was a lot of glaring mistakes and you don't have the same level of control. So it's a completely different process, but it was quite interesting seeing them side by side, how they differ. Yeah, very different. We were actually really <laughs> glad when it turned out not perfect because if someone could do it in five hours, we'd all be out of job. Yeah. <laughs> Just a few tears yeah. would have fallen. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. So we'll move on. Now you've seen all the FF&E, we'll move on. So you've got the fabrics. And again, we do this for clients because obviously we will present, they'll see all these fabrics in person. But when they go home, we like to send them back with a PDF and a printout of all the fabrics so they can kind of sort of absorb those over time. It's a lot to take in. The level of detail that it goes into. And this 3D rendered image, I mean, how many revisions? I'm sick of looking at it. <laughs> Can't even count anymore. No. But even to the point you can see the accessories on the shelf, those are the actual accessories that we are presenting to the clients. So yeah. the detail is it's like, it's, it's crazy true. once the project is done, when we look back on our CGI images, it's like almost like a photograph, how yeah. close it actually is, which just shows how accurate they are, yeah. which is really nice. It's true. I remember when we were installing our first demand project this summer, and it was the formal modulus. I particularly felt that because we installed, it was the last room that came together. And it was like I was standing in the CGI is the only way I can describe it. Cause I've looked at this image for four years. We designed it four years ago. And suddenly like being there in the 3D space was so surreal and quite emotional, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. You can do like a side by side slide. And like, we also spend a lot of time even figuring out where we're standing in the room to get the right angle. Yeah. So then you can figure out once you're in the room, what that point was and it's yeah. like, yeah, that's a, that's a good point actually, <laughs> Vanessa. Like working out in this chalet, it has an amazing space, but working out like what viewpoints to use for your 3D rendered images to really encapsulate the space and show the best of it, that was quite challenging in this area yeah, as well. Yeah, especially because um, we want to show like in this, at the front of this image, you see we have a games table and a bar area and we wanted to kind of have a sneak peek at that as well, but also be getting the kitchen, yeah. a bit of the dining room. It's kind yeah. of like... How much can we get into one image without it being overwhelming, I guess? We were asking yeah. for a lot, weren't yeah. we? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, let's get into the design. Yeah. I mean, what's your favorite part of this design? I mean, I love, we did a lot of kind of like rough edges so that, again, with that natural feel. So um, we have a cantilever kind of dining table that comes out of the island just as almost like another version of uh, like a breakfast banquet or casual um, dining while you can sit around while someone's cooking. So I think that's kind of 
unexpected in the space and it kind of picks up on the other kind of raw edge uh, countertops that we have in the kitchen. So it's just, I think I just love how many, uh, like the mixture of materials we've been able to put in. It's so interesting and it's very unique, especially for a cabin. We didn't want it to be like dark timber wood, which you see yeah, often. Cliche. So this is, yeah, how do we kind of do a more modern take on a really beautiful chalet? Yeah. Okay. Um, should we get into the fabrics? Yeah. Well, it's kind You're of the same here. color here, scheme, here. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's open too. plan, we had to make sure that each space flowed with another in this area, but obviously we wanted to mix up some of the materials and not have it too repetitive. So do you want to talk us through some of those? Yeah, I mean, we have, again, seen some of the same finishes from the living room, but um, just how they all really work together. We have this really interesting um, cabinet front for the bar area, um, and, but it's surrounded by this kind of paler timber color. Uh, which also carries into the kitchen. So it's about tying the two spaces together, but making them feel like their own. Um, and we've got this amazing, this is the color for the Riverstone splashback. So it's very, again, feels like something that was kind of sourced from a local spring or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, which is, you know, it's all about making it feel like it fits into the area. And I think we've achieved that. Um, and then still bringing in some surprises, doing a bit of a kind of a greeny, a warm green leather in the kitchen for the kitchen chairs. Um, and then picking up on, you can kind of see how these textures really work together. Um, this being an embossed leather uh, for the chairs and then the cabinets right next to it. So they kind of, they relate to each other without being the same, which is what we love to see as designers. Um, and then moving into the dining room, we wanted it to have this playful feeling. So for the dining chairs, we thought it would be fun for all the seats to be the same and they would be in a really you know, durable leather, but then have the seat backs um, kind of have different patterns on them. So they're all in the same colors, but they have different patterns. So visually it's quite interesting and playful, but it still all relates to one another. Um, and then we've got this gorgeous sideboard, which has a stone and bronze front, uh, which we're having custom made. And then this gorgeous chandelier above that just kind of, yeah, it's quite a statement in, this, in the room. Mm. Yeah, I feel like that, that covers kind of a lot of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so should we move on to the primary bedroom? I think this is my favorite room in the whole yeah. chalet. I mean, it's hard to choose, so I do love the open plan living area, but it's such a calming, elevated space. So if we start again with, have we got the look, mood and feel? Okay, so the look, mood and feel, I mean, this really does show quite strongly the design direction that we were going in. Yeah, we were inspired by uh, the painting on the far left for the color schemes. It's by an uh, artist that we love here in the studio, Deborah Tarr. And it kind of has these uh, really kind of pale mauves and a bit of like gold in it, um, goldy yellows. So that was kind of the direction we went for the color scheme. But for the style, we wanted it to feel like a, almost like an old French chateau, which, you know, it's in the same country, so it kind of <laughs> works. <laughs> but again, very elegant, very cozy. Um, we wanted to have a canopy bed so that, especially in the winter when there's a lot of cold air coming through, you can just almost like close the curtains and just hide from the world. Hide, <laughs> which we all need sometimes. <laughs> And then um, should we move on to the FF and E selection? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, some really special pieces in here, Vanessa. What are your favorite standout pieces? I mean, it's tricky, but possibly the mirror above the fireplace. It is kind of uh, an old uh, antique French style with tons of detail in it, and it's just That's a so beautiful antique, yeah. It's always nice to mix antique pieces um, into the space because they just have so much a story to tell and have yeah so much history in it that makes even a new a newer property feel older. I don't yeah, know, have, just have, gives yeah. it more character, more doesn't character, it? More layered, yeah. more energy. More energy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love the sideboard, um, like the chest of drawers that we've used as um, bedside tables. I think they're really special. I love that bow. Is that bow walnut or bow oak? Yeah. Brawl, brawl. We've got the sample here, but you can see it's got this beautiful um, pattern in the veneer. Just like so beautiful and it's such a nice tone for a wood color yeah. too it's got that pale almost like of... a gold it picks out the lovely golds that we've got in the fabrics mm -hmm. as well should we move on to the cgi yeah 
I mean, even if I do say so myself, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to take this bedroom and put it into my home. I mean, it's just perfection. I love everything from like the beams. We looked at a lot of different finishes in here as well. A lot of what you're seeing, the architectural details, it looks like they're original features, but we've introduced them by using reclaimed beams. We really wanted to create this kind of feel of a chalet that's evolved over time, not that everything's new, which is the case, everything is completely new, but I think it just adds so much character. Yeah. Having that warmth on the ceiling, especially with those tall ceiling heights, if that was all white, it would feel quite cold and yeah. clinical. The beams have definitely been weathered and kind of beaten up a bit, mm -hmm. so they're not a perfect, you know, 45 degree angle. They've got lots of knobbly bits and kind of just visually so interesting, especially on a ceiling, so very mm. special. And then, yeah, the canopy bed being a very important feature and having the little wall lights peeking out of the curtains so that if you're in there and you want to close the curtains, you can still have light to read yeah. and just different, we're all about different layers of lighting. Yes, um, so important. Very important. So you can kind of see, we've, it's a very interesting kind of color palette. It's kind of bringing in these kind of pale, yeah, mauves, as I was saying, and goldy tones, but again, it still feels very neutral. It's not in your face. I feel like for bedrooms, you want them to be like so calming and just inviting. And I think this really gives you that, but still is quite interesting. So, yeah. um, I think that's something we do a lot in our projects as well. Like our color schemes are quite complex. We never tend to do just one accent color. I love that we layer like one, no, two or three accent colors. And it's not necessarily an obvious combination to do this kind of like purpley lilac mauve with a gold and then we've got the ivory. But I think it makes it usable all year round. Like the gold gives the warmth, the purple lilac gives it kind of cool tones so it doesn't feel overly ornate and the cream makes it suitable in summer. So it kind of like works throughout all seasons, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Which was something that was important to our clients. They didn't just want to use it in the winter months. They like to come here in the summer as well. Mm -hmm. Anyway, you carry on, sorry, I'm talking over you. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah, so we loved for the canopy, instead of just doing one fabric, doing a mixture of the two, it just feels more layered. Um, and then bringing in this very subtle mauve color for the headboard. So already in the kind of the main furniture piece, you get the color scheme uh, that kind of sets the tone for the rest of the room. Um, and then, yeah, just picking up these gorgeous uh, cushion fabrics. We always love to have a little bit of fun with the cushions. We do. They if, are very important. If Vanessa's <laughs> involved, your cushion budget is going to go through the roof. <laughs> It's the most fun part. It really it is. It and pulls it's so everything important. together. It is. And we sometimes do little tricks to rein you in, like give you a different fabric on the back so you get to have like the beautiful, this is like all hand printed on silk velvet and you don't even want to know how much this costs, but then you can combine it with something on the back which makes it a bit more bearable. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we do that throughout the whole room as well, like talk, show us the um, rug. So we've got those really elevated, elegant um, velvets, but then we've combined it with a very sort of textured, earthy rug. Yeah, it doesn't, oh, here goes the turn. <laughs> it doesn't feel too formal, like it makes the space balanced so that, you know, you're getting all this luxury, but then you don't feel uncomfortable in the space. It's yeah. still very casual and, and cozy, which livable. Is, yeah, livable. <laughs> but then still bringing in this gorgeous, like, mixture of finishes and, yeah, a, a very subtle print for the curtains. So again, it's, you know, you're getting this neutral, but then when you're close up to it, you see kind of the added layer of detail, um, which I think is the beauty of interior design. All exactly. the different layers. And and it doesn't matter what kind of property you're designing. This is our first chalet, by the way, that we've designed. We're so excited. Um, and it's something that we've, well, it's been on my personal wish list for a long time. But I think the same rules apply whether you're designing a townhouse in London or a villa in the Middle East or a chalet in San Moritz, you kind of need to use those same rules and just obviously apply it to the local surrounding area, make it appropriate for the location, cater to the client's brief. But we've had a lot of fun. It's been really good to work on this. Yeah. So we hope that you guys like it. We yeah. hope our client likes it. They're coming in about half an hour, so we need to wrap this up. Um, but we'll um, be sure to share lots more of all of our current projects. We're working on so many exciting things at the moment. Um, I think this is about as much as we can show for now, but make sure you hit that subscribe button. Follow us on Instagram because we'll be sharing lots more behind the scenes and we'll see you very soon. Take care.